This is the Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition. Good evening all, I'm Shishina Lola. As always, it is so great to have you with us. Topic news, it has been almost three weeks now since the United States Embassy issued an advisory calling on its citizens to boycott jet ski rental companies. This coming following the alleged rape of an American woman in the nation's capital by a Bahamian man in the watercraft business. While the boycott targeted the jet ski operations in New Providence, jet ski operators here on Grand Bahamas say it is already having, having a rippling effect here on this island. Quincy Roll and Donovan Wright say they love their jobs as jet ski operators. I love my job. I love waking up in the morning, coming out to the beach, driving the boat or riding the jet skis, seeing new faces every day, meeting new personalities. I am a people's person, so that's giving myself the opportunity to come again and experience something like this. And experience uh, what other people think and how they live. It's a fun activity and many tourists throughout the world enjoy jet skiing in the crystal clear waters in the Bahamas. But recently the United States Embassy revealed that U.S. citizens have been sexually assaulted at the hands of jet ski operators and U.S. officials have called on Americans to boycott these services. These young men say while this is disturbing, it is unfair for the blame to be placed on all jet ski operators. There's several situations that happen on another island, but they're generalizing the situation throughout the whole Bahamas. You know, they are encouraging people not to patronize our business, but I don't agree with it at all. At the time I was working here, we never had an incident that occurred in that manner that they had to send advice to you out. They just, I'm thinking, they generalize the situation too much. And that's, I don't think that's right. And while these incidences happened in the nation's capital, the warning issued by the U.S. Embassy almost immediately caused a reaction here on this island. The men say they have witnessed a significant decrease in business. Everything just went to a little downfall. It wasn't like the guests coming out and saying in general, but you can see that they're a little scared of uh, what they heard about jet ski operators in the Bahamas. While the embassy has characterized the industry as loosely regulated, the Ministry of Transport has implemented additional safeguards and now have Defense Force officers providing surveillance during hours of operations. These men also believe that more must be done to protect their industry, noting that only licensed operators should be allowed to conduct business. Licensed persons don't put themselves out, that, out there to uh, make those type of mistakes. We need justice on that ASAP to make sure jet ski operators are licensed and trained and all those kind of stuff. In other news, eight Cuban migrants coming ashore in Boodle Bay this morning. The group of males were taken into custody by police and then assisted to the West End Clinic where they were treated for dehydration. The men claimed that they had been at sea for 16 days and ran out of food and water three days ago. Now, they also claimed that they were not far from Miami, but strong winds rushed their 16-foot rustic vessel towards West End. The migrants were handed over to immigration officials for processing. They will be, be detained on Grand Bahama overnight and will be flown to New Providence tomorrow to await repatriation. And as the nation grapples with the influx of migrants attempting to enter the country, an official says there is another concern for the Bahamas when it comes to migration. He believes the country is facing a brain drain that he claims is impacting various sectors of this country. Our Joan Davis Rowell has this report. Immigration and migration has oftentimes been linked to foreigners coming to the Bahamas, but experts say historically Bahamians have migrated in significant numbers to foreign lands as well. I want to dispel the perception that most Bahamians have that we're a rich country and we don't go nowhere to work. Our history is that we have actually done that. We have gone to Panama to work on the, the canal. We have gone to uh, Mexico, literally. We have gone to Mexico and have worked in the cane fields. We have gone to Haiti and have worked and continue to live in Haiti. There are behemoths there now. Long before you had Asians coming here in the 19, late 1950s. The Sir Charles Haywood Library became a classroom for students from both public and private institutions on Grand Bahama recently, as one of the foremost minds in history in the country revisited this aspect of Bahamian history. 
Director of Antiquities, Monuments and Museum Corporation, historian Dr. Keith Tinker, says that was then. This is now. We got a, a, a brain drain now with nurses. Nurses are going out working in Florida because the wages are so much higher. And we have engineers, we have others, and so this is a challenge we have. We need to be mindful of that, that we should not be so insular and think that all is well at home and we may not get the opportunity or have the need to go overseas. All we need is one black listing by the U.S. government and tourism will have a challenge and then you will find the brain drain and you'll find people traveling. This lecturer says that Bahamians have helped to build other nations and economies as well and their contributions here at home and abroad should not be taken lightly. A Bahamian of Haitian descent, a family literally. They are the Sulevet family out of Nassau. The kids, three kids went off to the United States. One is in Tampa, Florida, working as a, um, as a dentist. Another one is a nurse somewhere else. And the son is working with an NBA team. He used to be with the Los Angeles Lakers as a trainer. And he claims to be a Bahamian. So we have made our impact out there. We have exported in the area of entertainment. Um, look at Sydney Poitier, Esther Rolls. They have gone off and they have contributed significantly. John Davis Roll, ZNS Network News. And other news officers of the Department of Labor successfully completing a training program that is expected to enhance job performance. Participants were honored at a luncheon on Friday. Megan Shepard was there. The Department of Labor Grants Bahama Division hosting an appreciation luncheon for staff members after they completed a training session. Minister of Labor and National Insurance, the Honorable Shane D. Gibson, unable to make the occasion due to inclement weather, but Minister for Grand Bahama, the Honorable Dr. Michael Darville, delivering the keynote address on his behalf. Dr. Darville noting that organizations can only increase their performance and productivity by providing staff with the appropriate skills. The Ministry of labor uh, through this one week training program is leading the charge to make sure that our professionals who are in constantly contact with employees are well trained with state-of-the-art techniques and implementation tools to ensure that they understand the challenges that employees and employers face and to be the advocates to resolve these challenges in a productive way so that commerce can continue on the island. Director of Labor Robert Farkasin says the training session comes after restructuring and it helps to ensure better service to the general public. In addition to uh, the restructuring of the department, um, this training session facilitated comprehensive training um, regarding our employment exchange, our one-stop shop, a number of facilities. Um, and our goal is to be the first choice of the employee in Grand Bahama when it comes to finding job seekers. Farkasin also announcing that as of January 25th, Grand Bahama will have a fully functioning one-stop shop Department of Labor. That means every worker in Grand Bahama can come to the Department of Labor. If you don't know how to create a resume, we'll help you do it. If you know how to search on the internet, we'll help you search. We will register you and we will find a way to make sure that you are properly prepared for the job market. We are working with the National Training Agency we're working with the Bahamas Technical and Vocation in, in Industry and we're working with employers. Part of this training involves our officers visiting a number of employers because we want to build relationships with employers. The first time they have a job vacancy, we want to pick up the phone and call Mr. Science. Mr. Science, send me 10 people. We now have the tools in Grand Bahama, the skills in Grand Bahama, and the staff in Grand Bahama capable of performing those tasks. Staff members were pinned in recognition of their training and Minister Darville presented the Labor Officer Harrison Sands with a plaque. Sands was selected Employee of the Year for 2015. Megan Shepard, ZNS Network News. Grand Bahama businessman Edgar Outen Jr. was laid to rest this past weekend. Outen, a native of Turks and Caicos Islands, moved to Grand Bahama at a young age and made a mark in the island's construction industry. Now the nation's leader among those paying final respects to the fallen businessman over the weekend. It was a service of Thanksgiving in true Church of God of Prophecy style, celebrating the life of Edgar Outen Jr. 
Mourners heard of Outen's humble beginnings and how he defied the odds and rose to success. Hartley Forbes, Outen's friend of 76 years, told of Outen's love for his country. He recalled an incident when Sir Lyndon Pinling requested their help in cleaning up Grand Bahama during an independent celebration. Well, the old people there was Boyd Williams, Sam Williams, and um, the rest of them, Sonny Martin, and the rest of them, we, Alan Martin, we get together and um, we say, well, Junior, you know, we need some money. Man, that ain't a problem. <laughs> I said, well, how much money are you going to give me? He said, well, let's start with 10,000. I said, well, if you put in 10,000, I'll put in five, and I'll get the rest of the people to wake with it, and we clean Eight Mile Rock. The outstanding businessman was remembered as a fiery, passionate man, one who loved his family and oftentimes gave in secret. Many people come up to me and say, your granddad did this, or your granddad did this, or he donated this, or he paid for my schooling. And we would never know, he never bragged. He never bragged about what he did, he just did it. He did it with love, and he did it with compassion for those who he gave to. At an early age, Outen became an entrepreneur, a pioneer developer in the real estate industry, a labor union activist, and a philanthropist. The nation's leader, the Right Honorable Perry Christie says, much can be learned from any chapter in Edgar Outen's life. But what it means is, that it was someone who recognized that whatever it took in life to succeed, he was going to develop the will to do so. So the moral of that story to young Bahamians is that if you have the will, the determination, the fortitude, and the belief in yourself you can achieve. Edgar Outen Jr. passed away on January 5th, just two weeks before his 80th birthday. Stay with us, The Bahamas Tonight. The Northern Edition continues right after this.